You just opened an incognito window because you're shopping for a surprise birthday gift and don't want spoilers showing up in your browser history later. Does that little icon of a guy wearing a hat and sunglasses actually make you invisible online like some kind of digital ninja? Today, I'll explain what incognito mode actually does and what it definitely doesn't do, like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand whether you've been using it wrong this whole time and what you actually need if you want real privacy on the internet. Here's what most people think incognito mode does. They think it makes them anonymous. They think websites can't see them. They think their internet provider has no idea what they're doing. The name doesn't help. Incognito sounds like you're a secret agent. Private browsing sounds like nobody can peek over your shoulder. Now millions of people think they're ghosts on the internet when they're really just whispering in a loud room. So what does incognito mode actually do? It hides your activity from other people who use your computer. That's it. When you close that incognito window, it deletes your browsing history, cookies, and any passwords you typed in. If your roommate logs on after you, they won't see that you were browsing apartments in another city. It's local privacy. Think of it like closing your bedroom door. Your family can't see what you're doing anymore, but the neighbor with binoculars, they've got a clear view through your window. Incognito mode locks the door to your room. It doesn't close the curtains to the outside world. Here's where things get interesting. Incognito mode doesn't hide you from the websites you visit. When you go to Amazon in incognito mode, Amazon still sees you. They see your IP address, your location, what you clicked on, how long you stayed, and what you added to your cart. They just can't save a cookie on your device to remember you next time. But during that session, you're completely visible. Your internet provider sees everything. Every single website you visit gets logged. Incognito mode doesn't change that at all. Your ISP is like the post office. Every piece of mail you send goes through them and they can see the address on every envelope. Incognito mode seals the envelope so your roommate can't read your letter, but the post office still knows exactly where you sent it. Now here's the part that catches people off guard. If you're on your work computer or your school's Wi-Fi, incognito mode does absolutely nothing to hide you from IT departments. They control the network. They can see every website you connect to, incognito or not. It's like trying to sneak out through the front door and thinking nobody will notice because you're walking quietly. They own the house, they installed the locks, they know when the door opens. Your boss can see that you spent 45 minutes on LinkedIn during lunch. Think of the internet like a highway system. Incognito mode clears the GPS history in your car, so nobody else who drives it can see where you went. But the highway still has cameras. The toll booths still logged your license plate. Other drivers still saw you pass by. You didn't delete the evidence of your trip. You just deleted the record inside your car. Websites, internet providers, network admins, and anyone monitoring the Wi-Fi at that coffee shop, they all saw you drive past. Here's what nobody talks about. Websites can still track your session even without cookies. They use something called fingerprinting. Your browser type, screen resolution, installed fonts, time zone, and language settings combine to create a unique profile. It's like wearing a distinctive jacket that only you own. They might not know your name, but they know that jacket walked into three other stores today. Incognito mode doesn't change your fingerprint. This matters because privacy means different things in different contexts. If you're trying to keep your browsing private from your partner or kids who share the same laptop, incognito mode works great. If you're shopping for a gift without getting targeted ads that ruin the surprise, incognito helps. If you're logging into a second account without logging out of your first one, incognito is perfect. But if you think you're hiding from your internet provider, your employer, the government, or hackers on public Wi-Fi, you brought a raincoat to a hurricane. So what do you actually need for real privacy? A VPN is your first option. A virtual private network encrypts your traffic and routes it through a different server. Your internet provider can't see what websites you're visiting anymore. They'll see you connected to the VPN, but not where you went after that. It's like putting your mail inside another envelope addressed to a forwarding service. But here's the catch. You're just shifting trust from your ISP to your VPN provider. If your VPN company is sketchy, they can see everything instead choose carefully. Free VPNs are usually selling your data. And then there's the nuclear option. If you want maximum anonymity, there's Tor. The Tor browser routes your traffic through multiple volunteer-run servers around the world. It encrypts it at each step. 
it's like your mail getting passed through six different forwarding services in six different countries. Nobody along the way knows the full route. It's slow, it's clunky, but it's the closest thing to actual invisibility online. Journalists in dangerous countries use it. Whistleblowers use it. People who really need privacy use it. People shopping for engagement rings? They just need incognito mode and common sense. Here's what you need to understand. The confusion around incognito mode isn't really your fault. The name is misleading. The little icon with the spy hat sets the wrong expectations. Most people don't think about the difference between local privacy and network privacy. But the distinction matters. Incognito mode protects you from people using your device. It doesn't protect you from the internet itself. Let's talk about what this means practically. Say you're job hunting while still employed. You open incognito mode to browse LinkedIn and update your resume. Your boss won't see it in your browser history if they walk by your desk. But if you're on the company network, IT can see you access LinkedIn. They might not see exactly what you did there, but they see the domains. Incognito mode gave you privacy from local snooping. It gave you zero privacy from network monitoring. Here's another scenario people get wrong. You're at a coffee shop using public Wi-Fi. You open incognito mode thinking it protects you from hackers on the same network. It doesn't. Incognito mode only affects what's stored on your device after you close the window. It doesn't encrypt your connection. Anyone on that network with basic skills can intercept your traffic. They can see what websites you visit. They can potentially grab passwords if the sites aren't using HTTPS. Incognito mode isn't a security tool. It's a privacy from your device tool. Even tech savvy people make this mistake. They'll use incognito mode to hide their activity from their ISP or avoid targeted advertising. But advertising networks don't rely solely on cookies anymore. They use cross-site tracking, browser fingerprinting, and IP address correlation. You might block the cookie, but your fingerprint stays the same. Your IP address stays the same. Ad networks can still build a profile of your browsing habits across different sites. So here's where we are. Incognito mode deletes your history, cookies, and passwords after you close the window. Websites still see you during your session. Your internet provider still logs every site you visit. Your employer or school can still monitor your activity on their network. Incognito mode is local privacy, not network anonymity. If you want real privacy from tracking, you need a VPN or Tor. To recap the key points, incognito mode only hides your browsing from other people on your device. Cookies get blocked locally, but websites still track your session and see your IP address. Network administrators at work or school can see everything you do. For real anonymity, you need a VPN to hide your traffic from your ISP. You need Tor if you need maximum privacy. The name incognito makes it sound like a superpower when it's really just a local privacy feature. That gap between expectation and reality has left millions of people thinking they're invisible when they're standing in broad daylight. So here's the real question. If browser companies know people misunderstand what incognito mode does, and that misunderstanding could put people at risk, do they have a responsibility to rename it something honest like local privacy mode? Or is it on us to read the fine print before clicking that spy icon?